Yo, welcome back to the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're now talking today in history, February 10th in the year 2013. So what occurred today in history was the final match, the African Cup of Nations, you know. So on this day in history, we saw our Nigerians defeat Burkina Faso 1-0 and the Sunday Umba scored that only goal, you know, shooting Nigeria to the limelight and, you know, making us win the trophy for that match. Uh, the 2013 African Cup of Nations final took place this day in history and this was at the FNB Stadium in Johannesburg uh, which also hosted the 1996 Africa Cup of Nations final and the FIFA World Cup final that held uh, just uh, three years ago in three years after that match in uh, or before that match in 2010. Now it was a win that it seemed like it was fully deserved for Nigeria as they comfortably beat Burkina Faso's side and, you know, they won the African Cup of Nations. But despite all of this, Nigerians, you know, were not favorites basically coming into that cup tournament in 2012. Uh, new coach Steven Keshi had brought young home-based players and... Uh, the statistics after that semi-finals uh, showed that Emineke was Nigeria's top scorer with four goals and Traore was Burkina Faso's top scorer with three goals. And uh, on 8 February 2013, after receiving a protest by the Football Association of Burkina Faso, the African Cup of Nations uh, ruled to overturn the second yellow card received by Burkina Faso forwards in the semi-final. Nigeria had several chances to extend their lead in the second half, but none were converted. It was also the first time for 21 years that a black African coach won the cup. And uh, we saw that Ivory Coast Yo Marshall was the last to do so in the year 1992. Uh, the victory made Keshe the second man after Mahmoud El Guhari to win the Cup of Nations as both player and coach. So basically, this day in history, February 10, 2013, uh, Sunday Mbass got the only goal uh, for Nigeria to win the Africa Cup of Nations final 1-0. Uh, I remember the game very well, mostly because of the tension in the build-up to that game and then during the game and also because of the aftermath of this um, particular game and goal, uh, the controversy over Sunday Mba. Uh, Wally Scott would have loved to, to, to talk about to this. To talk about this. Uh, the controversy over, over him, he now became, you know, the talk of Nigeria because he basically saved Nigeria and won um, us the, champion, uh, the cup on that day. And so right after that, there was a lot of controversy over what club he, he belonged to, what clubs, you know, might be buying him, um, you know, um, after, you know, the championship. Unfortunately, somehow, some way, I don't think that name was popular one year later. I mean, it almost seemed like his career, you know, took a nosedive after all the drama and the controversy um, of um, scoring that goal and, you know, becoming, you know, Nigeria's savior in that um, uh, championship. So um, well, I'm not sure where he is. Wally Scott would know better. Uh, but <laughs> Sonny Oma, thank you very much for, for that goal. It was a very, 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 very much celebrated goal um, when it eventually got in. Anyway, yes. So still talking sports. Uh, now we're moving to 1992. And this is um, a story about one of the maybe the most popular name in boxing after Muhammad Ali. It was on this day in 1992 that uh, Mike Tyson uh, was accused of raping a uh, beauty pageant contestant. Her name was Desire Washington. Mike Tyson uh, rose to fame in 1990, uh, 1986, actually, at 20 years old, when he beat Trevor Berbick and became a champion at uh, age 20. He turned professional in 85 and the following year became heavyweight champion, a title that he retained till 1990. Um, before, of course, he was um, upset by James Buster Douglas. Um, th these parts in 1992 basically were some of the later years of Mike Tyson before his career eventually now started to take its own nosedive, um, um, losing to Evander Holy Holyfield and uh, Lennox Lewis. Um, but of course the story says that in 1991 they met at a hotel um, uh, for a rehearsal basically for Miss Black America in um, Indianapolis. Uh, she followed him back to his hotel room. Um, eventually, of course, then claimed that she was raped. He, you know, said it was consensual. But with testimonies from um, people, you know, his driver and a few other people, you know, he eventually was convicted of rape and was sentenced to 10 years in prison and uh, had four of those years suspended. Um, 
and eventually, you know, got released from prison sometime in 1995 after spending three years in jail. Then, of course, went back to winning um, um, ways. There was crit criticism over the games or the fights that he was given after, you know, he got out of jail because it seemed like his promoters were giving him um, very, very easy fights so he could win and force get back, you know, the, you know, his ratings and his popularity. But he, you know, continued in that run until he met Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield. Um, if I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure anybody would have forgotten the Evander Holyfield fight where he bit his ear off a little bit of his <laughs> ear off. Um, but those are some of the things that um, basically uh, tell the story of Iron Mike Tyson. Um, there were rumors about him being, you know, having a punch as, um, you know, that weighed 80 kilograms. Um, and, you know, numerous other things uh, that made him super, super popular. One of his fights ended in 86 seconds um, <laughs> and, and the fight was over before people were even, you know, fully seated um, in the boxing, you know, um, arena. The fight was over. So it was on this day that he was convicted and, of course, sentenced to 10 years in jail for rape and desire Washington. Um, um, even if he continues to, you know, plead uh, that he was innocent and whatever they had in that hotel room was consensual. Hmm. But we'll never know. <clears throat> yeah, we'll um, never know. Yeah. But, but we saw that uh, the examination that they conducted on her proved that the, her condition was you know, consistent with rape. Yes. We'll really, we'll never yeah. really would never... People would also then argue you know, that you know, there's always going to be conspiracy theories that say that in the height of a black man's career, there's always some controversy that comes out of nowhere to you know, pull him down somehow, some way. Th oh. That's going to be some argument in some part. But, I, I you know, but her t testimony cannot also be you know, pushed aside. If she True. says that she was raped, um, and of course there is you know, some examination and proof, then um, it, it cannot just be pushed aside and, and you know... Um, but I won't, I won't pay any mind to conspiracy theories, like you said, that, you know, in the, the heights of a black man's career. Because throughout history, there's been so many athletes, sportsmen, who have been convicted of rape, you know, sexual assault charges and all of that. So I don't really think it's a, it's a, it's a race issue here. But anyway, that's, uh, that's what happened in this day in history. 1992. And yes, we told you what happened in today in history in the year 2013. So that's, uh, that's it for you on Today in History. Well, we'll take a break now and return to discuss uh, this very important issue. Yes. You know, Lagos State and traffic uh, offences. Do stay with us.